This is Comet 2017 K2 Panstar. How did I get it to animate? Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop at Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. And you know, the first thing you wanna to do to animate the comet, of course, is to capture the comet uh, first of all, uh, with your telescope. You can't see it with the naked eye. You need a telescope to see this faint comet. However, it's still visible up in the sky. So let's first take a look at Stellarium to see where this comet is located. And at 11 o'clock at night right now in the middle of July, uh, it's in the south-southwestern sky over here um, near the um, constellation Ophiuchus. And uh, I think, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, Ophiuchus? Anyway, there it is right there. Uh, and to give you some bearings, there's the bright star Antares in the constellation Scorpius, or the Scorpion. And over here is a very bright yellow star, Octurus. There's the comet right now. And it's going to be in this position for the uh, next several weeks, or in this vicinity, not position. Uh, it's going to slowly drift southward toward the uh, um, Scorpion. And uh, as it does, it'll grow fainter and fainter. But right now, it's at a magnitude of about 7.0, which is very dim. You cannot see this with the naked eye. You need to look through a small telescope at least to see this. Now, the telescope that I used was the Orion Eon a 130 millimeter telescope. And I took two minute subs uh, using a, a monochrome camera with a UVIR filter. And uh, with those two minute sub, I was able to take over three hours worth of data. So with that, I go into Deep Sky Stacker to look at the data itself. That's the next point. After collecting the data, let's go into Deep Sky Stacker. And there it is. I loaded the fit, FITS files into Deep Sky Stacker. And I also added my, my darks and my flats and my dark flat files. And uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to center this comet uh, and uh, to do that, you got to go into the comet editing mode. And to do that, you just click on that. And what this is going to do, it's going to try to find the comet for you and, and center it in the position here. Now, if for some reason it doesn't center to your specification or likings, just use your uh, mouse wheel to zoom in on the comet and uh, you know, just place your cursor over near the comet and it'll stay centered. Do that for each individual frame yeah each one i mean i had 119 frames and i did this on all each frame uh, to center the comet and the once that's done then you can go into uh, editing mode and and to make the animation you want to go into the uh, your settings uh stacking settings and then go into the comet mode and you want to use standard stacking. In other words, you want to stack with the stars being locked on so that the uh, the stack file will keep the stars stationary and the comet will then be moving uh, per each frame. And over a two minute frame, it's not going to be moving too much, but over three hours, yeah, there's quite a bit of difference in the motion of the uh, comet itself. So you want to use that. Now, if you want to go into comet stacking and stars plus comet stacking, you can play around with that. But if you go into comet stacking, uh, you're going to have the uh, stacking centered directly over the comet, uh, but the stars will be uh, moving. The comet will be stationary, but the stars will be moving. Them. They'll uh, 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 form streaks uh, of star motion. Anyway, we're not interested in that. We're interested in standard stacking. So once you're done with that, uh, you're ready to go. And so the next step then is to gather all these calibrated files. And... Uh, these will be in TIFF files if you have your system set up to save as TIFF files. And then what I did from there is I went into uh, Photoshop. And, and let's load Photoshop in right over here. Now the first thing you want to do is go into File and go into uh, Scripts. And then over into Scripts, go into Load Files into Stack. So click on that. So what you want to do is, is go into uh, now Browse the Files where uh, Deep Sky Stacker saved your file, and you want to take those calibrated TIFF files, so you got to find those. There they are, right there. And click on the first one, and then go all the way down to the uh, last one. You can see them there, this is calibrated TIFF. And click on that one there, and then open. 
all right this is going to take a little bit in this case because I had again 119 files well there they are already all right and uh, then just say okay now this is going to load everything into uh, layers uh, into uh, one image but it'll be all layers and there you can see the layers starting to add up so this is going to take a little time because uh, again 119 files so I'm going to pause it right now until this is finished loading and I'll get back with you all right the file is finished loading uh, and all 119 frames so uh, the next step is to shrink this down a little bit it's it's a big file as you, if you look I don't need big files for the animation but the image size right here uh, you know uh, 46 56 by 35 20 I don't need it quite that big so I'm going to bring it down to 1920 1920 by uh, defaults to 1452 if you keep the uh, size and uh, width and height uh, linked together anyway I uh, say that okay and this is going to squeeze this entire um, frame uh, down into a much smaller size so it'll be easier to work with and eventually when I export these files uh, to another folder it'll be easier to import into the movie editor which in this case I'm going to be using DaVinci Resolve as you can see now it's, it's it's shrinking these down again it's 119 images so it's going to what well, it's done there it is all right I was going to uh, zoom in a little bit all right. now the next thing I want to do is go into filter and camera raw filter and this is gonna I'm gonna stretch this out and massage this image in Photoshop and I'm on the first image over here and uh, bring this over to here um, so we want to go ahead and play with it uh, you, you just play with this until you uh, find something you really really like and uh, and then and then you're gonna have to stick with it but all right here I have something that I I will I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this as my default right here and whatever one you pick you know you have to play with this but I can see the tail and there's the comet right there so what you do is say okay now make sure this is what what you want before you say okay and say okay because what's going to happen Sarah right there is your is your change and what you need to do now now I don't know how to anim or how to automate this in Photoshop but what I did is each individual frame you click on that and then you go into filter and then the top uh, value will be the last thing you did in the uh, uh, filter category and just click on camera raw filter and it'll take that last setting and apply it to the next setting and then you turn off that and go to the next setting now there's a shortcut if you go into this you know, camera raw filter is the hold down the alt key the control key and the F key so let's just do that on the keyboard control alt F and there it's doing it see and you have to do that for each individual frame control alt F and it does it for each one there's a satellite passing through right there uh, but then again you know every single frame and uh, make sure they're all selected so you could take the top one and take the bottom one and hold down the shift key and select it so they're all now selected once that is done then you click right click your mouse and you'll see there's a uh, export as where is that export as right there click on that and a uh, box will come up and it's going to now load in all these images into this this is why you um, shrunk the file size down from over 4,000 pixels down to that 1920 pixels because uh, this would take forever to load um, but it's 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 a little bit faster now but it's still going to take a little bit of time so I'll come back when this is finished all right it's finished loading in all these files here so the next step you want to do is make sure that the size is right and I have it right where I like it 1920 by 1452 I'm not interested in the transparency I can turn that off 
and uh, there it is. And I want uh, PNG files, uh, ping files. Uh, you have the option of going for uh, JPEG or GIF or ping. Now I'm, I'm taking the ping file right here. And um, keeping the canvas size the same. I can add some metadata if I want to, copyright and contact information, what have you. And uh, this is a black and white image. I'm going to keep it at that. You can convert it to a uh, RGB image if you want, but uh, just leave it at this. This is black and white. I'm going to keep it at that. Then you just say export. And it's going to ask where do I want to put these. I got a file named animation files. I'm going to put those in there. Select folder. Okay, it's exporting now. I can see it coming in over here. I'll bring this over here. You can see it's exporting the files over to here. And you see they're all ping files. So it's got to do all these files and it, it'll do all that. Saving all the files into another directory. And then these are the ones I'll be able to uh, put into the video editor to make the, uh, the movie. So here I am in DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to load in the files. So uh, go into import media and uh, there's the animation files right there. So now we have the beginning images right there and we just select all and then open. And there they all are right there. And so then I can just again select all and then pull them into the editor itself right there. So I'm going to start the animation here and then just play it there. You can see how it moves up in the sky and that's how I make the animation. All I have to do now is just render that out and I have the final product. Well thanks for watching. You know the comet's going to be uh, visible in the southern skies throughout the summer months, particularly in the northern hemisphere, slowly sinking southward uh, as the summer wanes. Uh, but you'll need a telescope to see this faint comet. Now if you like this kind of video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and uh, please hit the like button if you like the video as well. And uh, I do a lot of astrophotography right here in my backyard from the Heavenly Backyard Garden. And I'd like to thank all my uh, friends of Heavenly Backyard that are helping to support my channel. And if you would like to support my channel, please go ahead and join the channel, uh, but you don't have to. Anyway, you know, I just love looking at the heavens. I have ever since I was seven years old and now I'm now 72 and still just in awe when I look up at the heavens and you know those James Webb Space Telescope pictures that just came in just floored me like everybody else. Anyway, uh, I, I enjoy this hobby very much and I, I'm always in awe when I look up at the heavens during the nighttime hours. So, you know, if you have the opportunity to get out and enjoy the heavens, go ahead, please look at the stars. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders, and they're all in a sky near you. Now, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.